first things first, how are you today? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, in between uh, packing merch bundles and stuff. I'm even uh, repping my own jumper like a loser. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I've just been between work and doing this and doing social media posts and and now we're here. So yeah, been a bit, a bit, bit of a busy day. It was nice the business is still there because, of course, everything in theory should calm down and relax just a little bit upon the release of a new album. Um, how is everyone in She Must Burn overall? Yeah, everyone's doing really well. I think everyone's just like uh, still buzzing off of the the release. Like it's done, it's done well. Like we put a lot of um, work into making sure that it did it did well, you know. But it's always nice to see everything you've been building up behind the scenes come into fruition and and seeing that it actually did better than I guess it's weird to say it's better than it's gone better than you could than what you're expecting um it's not that we we're expecting it to do badly or anything it's just always nice to see i think that what it is is because we've just released new merch bundles and stuff and you can kind of see from the merch bundles and the the stats mm. on the so, on social media as well as you know spotify and things like that you can really see how far reaching your music has has gone um so you know we're having people ordering stuff from japan you know places in europe got you know all over england like lots of stuff in in america as well so it's it's just nice to see that all the kind of work you put in to try and make sure that when it does release it goes really far to see that it actually has if you know what i mean so it's gone way better than we could have hoped and we're super happy about it yeah i mean it's amazing that it could be going uh, as <laughs> far worldwide in such a short amount of time as well because it's only been a few weeks since it was released as well what do you attribute that to do you think um do you think it's the quality do you think it's just the better reach um i think that there's a there's a lot of things to factor into it um i think because we released some of the uh like one of the singles uh of blood and bone we released that um kind of showcasing the new vocalists uh back in 2019 um i think that and then obviously lockdown hits we couldn't carry on with the release until it was more viable to do so mm. um but it was like when the I think could that 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 song kind of gained quite a lot of traction just on like social media forums and stuff like people sharing it on places like Reddit, mm. you know, and we got a lot of even though we weren't we were completely silent. We didn't want to be one of those bands that kept saying, you know, something coming soon, something coming soon when there wasn't really a guarantee of when soon was in lockdown. You know, we just kind of stayed quiet and kept everything under the uh, under wraps or played everything close to the chest. And in that time, we still had like steady like growth yeah. in terms of like people, new people finding us, people discussing us on social media. Um, and I, it just kind of, and our Spotify followers and stuff went up. So what happened was, was when we then came to actually release the music, we had this kind of like, almost like a, this ball of moss that was already kind of gathering. Mm. So that when these, when it hit and, and the album dropped, there was just like so many people anticipating the release and we're really excited for it and and i guess it like because of that what happened was as you know with like spotify algorithm rhythms and things like that the more hype there is on day one the more playlists you get added to we got added to featured playlists um we got added to the spotify uh, editorials including things like the deathcore playlist uh, which has got a massive following and we were song one on there so day one of the release, we were song one on the Deathcore playlist. We're the first anyone that listens to Deathcore on Spotify will be clicking that song. Yeah, and it just, I mean, that got like what? Let me let me think. It was like it was like a like just off of uh, the playlist alone, we ended up getting you know thirty forty thousand plays just off the bat, yeah. like just just brand new people. So I, I'd attribute it all to kind of this kind of ball of moss that was gathering over time versus lucky enough to hit the various editorials and once you hit one you just kind of get thrown further and further and further you know um yeah it's just luck i guess <laughs> i mean i hear what you're saying it's incredible <laughs> and luck of course does play a factor when it comes to as you described spot of a place and all that but talent and ability is an important part of that as well because word of mouth still spreads still talk 
it's been a few weeks since the release of Umbra Mortis. How, uh, that feedback that you are receiving from the listeners, not necessarily the critical reviews itself, but mainly your fan base, the people who are commenting on your social media and all that, from what I've seen, universally positive remarks yeah. about you. Is that what you've experienced? A hundred percent, yeah. Every We were overwhelmed by the amount of like positive feedback we've had in the past. You know, people have always got something negative to say, but we're kind of like suspicious at the amount of... <laughs> positive stuff we're getting we're like what's going on here why well, everyone's everyone's saying something nice um you know uh and we're, we're we're up for a bit of criticism you know don't get me wrong um you know we're, we're kind of geared up for it but mm. it just never came and and you know of course like i was saying with the spotify albums and all that kind of stuff i guess that's the business talk side of things like the, my critical brain I'm, I'm the one that's like looking at the stats of the management and stuff and identifying the you know where trends are and you know what where where can we go to play shows and mm. you know who likes us where and all that kind of stuff and I, and I don't mean to downplay the the music itself and the the talent of you know my uh, fellow bandmates you know and the the amount of hard work that they put in to make sure that you know they everyone's put their heart and soul into it and that definitely obviously without that there would be no gathering ball of moss or <laughs> whatever yeah. analogies I just use um so yeah musically you know i think that everyone broke a piece of themselves off and put it into this definitely like you know and that's that's the you know an understatement really because it's been a it's been a it's been a tough three years like making sure it's as good as it can be I think, I think that's something um, uh, cursory listeners or fans or people first discovering may not be too aware of is the amount of time and work that has gone into this. So yeah. I want you to take me back to the early days of the album's inception, specifically your vision and what it might have looked like. Did you have one when you first started to work in this album? Yeah, we definitely have a vision um, it, because we had a new... It was an interesting one, actually, um, and it's and it's because of that that the album has become what it is. Now, essentially, obviously, we had a previous lineup and we released uh, the EP and Grimoire, um, which were uh, uh, you know the EP and our, our, our debut album, and then since then we had a lineup change. And um, what we wanted to do was essentially encapsulate some of the elements of what the band was always been about, because there is this core kind of this is what she must burn is mm. and and the band in itself we kind of see it as having a soul of its own um and we wanted to keep that kind of but we also wanted to adapt on it and, and, and build on it and kind of evolve it to the next step while simultaneously trying to um i guess because we've got to completely new vocalists who have completely different vocal styles we're kind of thinking you know how do we create something that's similar to what we've created before that's still the essence of the same band but evolve it more simultaneously changing bits and pieces and uh, you know to to facilitate for the new vocalists and to show the, the new vocalist capabilities we didn't want to get the vocalists to come in and be like oh can you do what the old vocalists used to do because that's not what so we're kind of going how can you keep the essence of the band when you're actually changing the face of it entirely mm. um and it was that kind of uh that kind of idea that you know we were trying to put into uh the music but then after the first kind of you know few writing sessions with uh, jack who's a, a guitar player who was basically uh, working with us as a producer at the beginning he wasn't even in the band um to start with we were kind of working with him and bouncing ideas with him and and then it just started to become like really natural and once you start getting the vocalists into the studio and and experimenting with different things it kind of just yeah it it just it it kind of gave birth to itself in a way in a kind of in a way I guess it's kind of cliche to say that but I'd say that the I I guess if I had to summarize what the idea was it was this kind of trying to build on the past and kind of get these embers and turn them into flames I guess <laughs> in a if you wanted to say it in a you know in that kind of way in a um what's the word what would you, the uh, snapshot almost way of describing it but it, it's descriptive and it gets across exactly what we're saying and makes a lot of sense but of course that's what you might have wanted to do were there events or situations within the band within yourself as individuals that mm. ended up changing the path you were on during the process of the album either for better or for worse okay yeah so 
well, I think lockdown had a massive part in it because, you know, like I said, we were, we met, we, when we first started writing the music, it was myself, James, uh, the other guitarists who were like original members. And then we got Jack, who was uh, working as a producer. Hmm. And we didn't even have uh, like vocalists or anything at the time, but we knew we wanted to carry on and, and write music, be it in something new or carrying on the, the legacy of what we had we'd previously built uh, with the with the old members and we we didn't really know we just wanted to write music and continue what we were doing basically and and we worked well together and you know and stuff like that so anyway we we started working with Jack and we started having these ideas and then we met Vallis and Vallis is a classically trained singer um so she was able to bring to the table not just the thing that people uh, the style of vocals that people were used to with the uh, previous songs but able to adapt on that in many different ways as well, because she's able to um, do operatic stuff. And and unlike uh, other albums of our genre uh, from other bands, uh, instead of using synth choirs and stuff, Valis does the choirs herself. So there's these these elements of like, well, as we were adding members to the band as we went, um, up until lockdown, we were kind of, um, it was it was changing the way the songs were sounding based on what the vocalist capabilities were. Oh, Carl can do vocals that are like this and like this. So that means we can write bits and sections like this. And, and the songs would change as more people kind of came in, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then we, when we released the Blood and Bone, it was literally just to demonstrate how good the musicians, the new band members were. Um, you know, Jack's solo and um, Vallis's like operatic singing and then Carl's, um, you know, brutal vocal stuff that he does, um, some of the fast paced stuff with some of the like really low stuff. And then unfortunately lockdown hit. Mm. But we were able to uh, sit there and stew in the feedback from the, um, the of Blood and Bone. And even though we had the foundations of the songs already in place, looking at the feedback from the Blood and Bone, people were like, oh, you know, we're expecting this. And we thought that there would be more kind of blackened elements here and there. And we did have that, but it kind of, it, it kind of made us like kind of spend the time in lockdown, like kind of recalibrating what what we thought this was supposed to be. And instead of me personally focusing, for example, on, you know, what it should sound like based on what we were before and what this, you know, we kind of just let it grow naturally and just kind of put it all in the past and just kind of just went, right, well, this is, this is what this sounds like. This is what we want to do. And we spent the, 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 the the entirety of lockdown essentially just going back backtracking we added new we took songs out we put new completely new songs in um and yeah it was for the better because we can safely say that every song on the album has had as much you know blood sweat and tears put into it as any other song you know which may not have been the case if we were trying to get rush the album out or whatever the case may be a positive uh, out of a very negative period, ultimately allowing you the time and the freedom to explore. Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah, exactly that. You summarised it in uh, a few sentences but I was, <laughs> while I was waffling on, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. But nobody wants to hear me. They want to hear you. So I'll <laughs> waffle on by all means. Um, considering all of that, I'd imagine there was a massive as well from a personal perspective as a musician and an artist, there was a challenging aspect of having to, not necessarily change, but adapt and grow your style of music and what you had previously done and what I'd done in She Must Burn. Was was it easy for you to transition, I think that's the right word, or grow yourself as an artist as you did working with the new vocalist? Yeah, I mean, um, so, so what you're asking is, so basically um, working with the new vocalist, was it easy to transition into the new lineup from the old one based on our experiences together? For, for you as a as a personal as a musician and an artist the challenge that comes with um effectively as you described it starting again in a way yes. it was like starting again it did very very it did feel like starting again and we also had this kind of you know because it was quite fresh that the previous lineup had broken up and no one had really really knew about it mm. you did have that kind of like shadow lingering over go from like the US tour to kind of ju it just being me and James within a couple of within a few weeks essentially which is kind of a weird uh, transitional period from being like this is this is what we've always dreamed of to what the fuck is going on you know sorry to, but it's it's kind of like uh, so so yeah but i mean as a personally 
you know, as soon as we started getting those uh, the other the other people on board, I felt like it was more collaborative. Um, it was much easier to kind of work with some members, not you know insulting anyone previously. It's just kind of like the dynamic wise. You know, sometimes you just work better with some people than you do others. You know, it's not about you know getting along or anything like that. It was just it's just the case of it was just more all round more of a collaborative effort, and I felt like um, I write. Uh, lyrics as well i wrote some of the lyrics on the previous album mm. um i wrote i've written uh, some lyrics for the um for the for this album as well and uh i felt like i was able to uh, put more ideas forward and and kind of actually collaborate with people which in turn made me feel like i was better at doing what i was doing um i've also taken over things not even just musically you know as a, as a musician i've grown better because of jack's uh masterful guitar playing and um insistence on writing incredibly difficult to play riffs <laughs> I, I, i've obviously grown as a musician trying to keep up with him but then outside of being a musician as well you know um taking over some of the stuff with the social media and making um d- designing the the merch stuff and and doing all, the, all this kind of stuff so it's, it's just all round for me on a musical level and a personal level i feel like my business know-how my uh video editing skills my social media you know skills as well and everything everything has been has fed into each other and it's just it's really given uh everybody in the band i think room to grow as musicians as as we've been working through this whole process personal professional it's all growth it's uh anything that continues to progress you as an artist and a musician as a person it's always and your enthusiasm for what you're currently doing, the Must Burn, plus the new album, uh, album yeah. more clearly shines through. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I've, I've, it's been, it's been awesome. You know, it's one of those experiences where it's kind of like, uh, you know, if it's going to be one of those, there's going to be times during this writing process where I'll, I'll definitely be, I'll, I'll remember them forever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know they're, 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 there's things that it, during this process and between first starting writing and uh, the release um, and everything after the release. They're just, they're just memories that people can't take away from you, no matter what, you know what I mean? No, of course. And considering the period it took place over, I mean, ideally, fingers crossed, this will be a unique one-off scenario for you and everybody else. I hope so. I really do, yeah. Uh, wh- what about some more positive sort of surprises over that period? Uh, moments where potentially you or your bandmates, the whole band, She Must Burn, surpassed even your own expectations and maybe discovered something about the band overall? Um. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think that... Can you Can you say that one more time? Sorry, I just had a moment of just... No. Down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> uh, positive surprises over the writing oh, period. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Moments were potentially where you surpassed your own expectations of what you or the band was capable of and maybe discovered something nobody knew about She Must Burn. Okay, yeah. So I guess uh, positive surprises, I'd say that... I'd say that... the. So there's a few things that are bouncing around in my head around, you know, there's things that I'm trying to think of the most, most relevant things that we could, that I could, uh, that I could talk about, I suppose. Positive surprises, I'd say perform like performance wise, let's go with like for the first one, let's go for like music videos and stuff. Ooh. I think that the, something that like really like surprised me was that, because during lockdown, there's not many band practices going on, right? So we're having, so we're writing together in the studio and all this kind of stuff. And then, what, and then the next minute, we're walking into a, into this like derelict building or whatever to record this like, uh, you know, the music video with the muscle cars and things. And and I guess the what what was great for me was, uh, seeing everyone come into their own performance wise and kind of uh coming up with ideas for the music videos and how we can do this and how we can do that and really making the most out of these. Mm. This, uh, this thing I, I know for, for me personally like just do, being in doing this stuff for quite a while it was really cool to see like band members like kind of it was kind of the I guess it's sometimes it's, it's the first moments you really see that everybody just like gels so 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 well you know we have we're not playing live shows that's normally the moment where that happens 
but like because we're doing it our live show is these music videos it was kind of like you know you see everyone just kind of come together in such a way and um and it was just it's great i mean i don't know if you've been in many bands yourself over the years do you, you don't okay fair enough um but like for me at least over the years like a band dynamic is sometimes on a knife edge yeah you know and 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 it, you have days where you're great and you have days where you're really not and um i think for so for me it was a positive surprise to see everybody just like properly gelling together just it's just like uh, to be able to stand back and just witness everybody just enjoying the moment taking it all in getting involved doing all this kind of stuff it's just for me it's just you know i think that like uh, conflicts and stuff are the things that that like really like mess me up mentally i suppose <laughs> like that tension between people and we just don't have that so it's just kind of that was a positive surprise for me and i, I guess it's kind of on, on a tangent a little bit i suppose but I don't know. It's just one of the things that I reflect on quite a lot. I did a social media post recently where I was looking for all the photos from all the behind the scenes stuff. And I say, you know, at times when, you know, it gets really difficult and there's financial struggles or there's deadlines that you're trying to hit and it becomes really stressful. Like you look for old photos and in every single one, we're all just laughing. You know what I mean? Like we're all just having a good time. And it just reminds me of like why you, why we're doing it to begin with. You know what I mean? And I guess for and if I wanted to go for like a musical, like the actual specific musical aspect of what surprise, what surprises me is that, you know, you can give Kyle uh, a section of music that's incredibly fast that no one should be able to sing over and he can. Or you give Valis a note that she shouldn't be able to hit and she does. Or, you know what I mean? Just these things like that where you're in the studio and you, you can tell because like you, there's a vocal booth there and you're just listening intently as they're singing their bit and then they hit that note like perfectly and you all just, just you just all just like look at each other like like that was that was good you know just the no words but the eye contact you're just like yes this is this is it you know this is when sometimes when you hear I'm sure lots of bands have this or lots of musicians have this but when you're when you're recording something in the studio and you hear it played back for the first time in a non-pre-pro kind of aspect and it's like the real thing and you've tracked it for real and you hear it for the first time it you you know you know what i mean you know when it's when you're on to something you're like this is it this is the song this is the chorus this is the breakdown you know these are the moments and they're that you know hopefully i answered your question in my rambling <laughs> Wonderful, like your pride in um, what you, you all do as a group is uh, it's immeasurable. And it's, it generally is wonderful to hear, um, particularly as I think from what you described at the start, we talked about the vision, the album matches what you set out to do. Do you feel that? Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, it's, it's, it's a weird kind of, it's this thing where you kind of go, this is the bar, we, this is what we want. You know, this is what we're aiming for, this particular target here. And over time that, you know, I guess it does adjust in a way, mm. um, like you were saying, but it's kind of just a better, ver it, for me, I know it's, you know, I play bass, so I didn't, I didn't write all the riffs, so I can say, I can say whatever I like. <laughs> um, and I'm not uh, patting myself on the back about it at all. It's more a compliment to the people, like people like Jack and, and James and uh, Vallis and Kyle and Steve. But I would say that um, I feel like it, it just became a, a better version of what it was supposed to be. So I feel like we were aiming for a particular thing and and we ended up just overshooting it by quite a long way, in my opinion. You know, like, and it sounds like I'm patting myself on the back, but I'm not. I'm, I feel like I, I can stand back and say, like, you know, I'm incredibly proud of yeah. what everyone else has, has done and everything that they've done. And it's because of them that we were able to do that, so... It's part and parcel of um, what, what expectation. Of course, you've got to be humble, but man, oh man, it's a quality piece of work. So you. you don't want to say out when you say it. It's an amazing album and it's getting to reach and hopefully continues to grow because it's still such early days. The dust it is. is settled on this thing. No, and, and we're, we're going to keep pushing it and, and see where it goes. And, you know, uh, it's great. All the people that are following us and everything and, and, and commenting and like every time that people comment or like and share the stuff, it, it, you can see the the growth go along with that to new people and there's so many people out there that haven't heard us yet yeah. so we just got to do our best to kind of send uh, get it out there to those to those guys and girls but um 
you know, until then we're we're happy with everything we've we've received so far feedback wise. We're incredibly grateful for all the people that have invested so much, like you know, they invest their money, their time, uh, everything. You know, it's it's worth everything to us. And you know, it's it's also incredible to see people that have been with us since since 2014. You know, like when we first started doing this, um, people are still commenting. Oh, you know, I never heard you guys until we met you in America, and I've been listening to you ever since. Or I bought your EP back when you were a local band. You know, it's just, and I'm, and they're still here, and it's just, um, yeah, we can't thank those people enough, really. As the stat studier, yeah. uh, <laughs> say that again. Sorry. As the stat studier, then I have yes. to ask you, the album's out, people are listening to it, you're looking at what tracks are getting plays and so on, that kind of thing. Have you noticed listeners are taken to a specific track that perhaps you didn't expect them to before release? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. My favourite song on the album, I'd say, you know, is uh, the self-titled, is Umbra Mortis. Um, I really like that song. It's probably because I wrote, I did the lyric video for that song, which we released recently, and I've listened to it about 10,000 times because of that. So it's just drilled in my brain. But for some reason, I didn't expect it to be everyone's favourite song. Mm. But at the moment, it's it's um, the most popular by quite a long way. Um, so that that kind of surprised me. Um, for, for some reason, I don't I don't know why it surprised me. I think it's just listening to the album I, I figured uh, the rats in the walls which is uh, the track after the intro i guess it's like the kind of the full opening track with both uh, vocalists on for some reason i thought that would be the most popular and it is it's second but i don't know i, I just i guess it is people gravitate towards that also there's a song uh, souls asunder which i love um but it's quite um it's incredible. It, it it does actually it stands out for me as one of the songs on the album. And I thought because it stood out that it might be something that people didn't gravitate towards. Sometimes you find that the songs that stick out the most, the people that sh- the ones that people shy away from, they kind of stick to the singles. Yeah. Um, but since the album's release, it seems as though you know it's those songs that that people are gravitated towards the most. You know. Um, but it's all doing really well. But it's Umbra Mortis in particular is just. Way above. That's the one that made the editorials and stuff as well. So that's probably why. But I'd say, yeah, I was quite surprised. I, yeah. Awesome. Was, I was thinking about that today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It'll be interesting to see six months down the line where everything sort of settles and which is their top played. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching I'm, every day when it updates. Um, I'm having a look and seeing, what, seeing what's uh, popular where. It's interesting to see, you know, in what countries we're, you know, are most, you know, we've got like a, a quite a big following in places like Helsinki. Mm. And we have um, people in uh, like Uruguay that listen to us and people, you know, it's just, it's, it's amazing to see how, like in the digital age, how far music can go. It really is. And it uh, it's uh, it can get obsessive uh, uh, to a degree when you start seeing yourself spread around the world and following those stats. But in the UK, November eighteenth. Yes. November eighteenth. Yes. Important day as you are going to play in the Islington Academy yeah. in London. Yes, we are. Yeah, and I'm, we're really excited about it. Um, we're uh, doing a lot of preparation. We've got uh, a big day on this Saturday where we we've hinted, uh, hired out a live room and we're doing some light show testing and stuff like that. We've got uh, the entire light show rigged up to the um uh to the to the set so everything's pre-programmed and all looking incredible um it's definitely the most effort we've ever been able to put into a set um because we're normally a supporting band or or we have been a supporting band in the past and the headline shows we've played have been at like uh the black heart they don't leave much much room for light rigs um <laughs> but this uh the o2 does so we're putting a lot of effort into that and we're, we're kind of aiming towards having it as a uh, an immersive experience in a way as well. So, you know, we've got a lot of the light show themed, themed like the lights themed around like the music videos and stuff. So, for example, uh, Misery Eternal, it has that um, that blue kind of blue grey kind of, you know, uh, deathly undertone to the track um, and to the to the uh, 
you know, the overlays of the video and whatnot. So we're going to be implementing that into the room. So hopefully when we're seeing songs like Misery Eternal play live, it will feel like you're in the music video. Awesome. That's what we're aiming for anyway. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's a great venue for it. So I'm sure it'll all work out wonderfully. It sounds like an amazing show. I hope it goes fantastic. You know as well as I do, momentum is so important. It's so behind you. You talked about the rolling uh, thingy. Moss. <laughs> Ball of moss. There it is. And that's just picking up speed. We roll into 2023. And I suspect um, that you'll have, be continuing to be as busy as possible, right? Yeah, hundred percent. We've got uh, big, big dreams, and um, we will continue to try and uh, achieve them as much as we can. And we keep moving the goalposts of what we're trying to get to, um, you know, and just being as ambitious as possible. I think you have to be. And uh, as far as we're concerned, the you know the sky's the limit, and we're just going to keep, keep trying and keep pushing the music, and and you know at some point release more, and you you know you'll be hearing a lot from us going forward definitely that's the most important thing hearing a lot from you making as much noise as possible but for now on remortis is literally brand new get out and hear that because it's 100%. one of the best things you'll hear this year and uh thank you well, it's deserved thank well, you thank you very much yeah no problem no problem thank you for taking the time to do this i really appreciate it yeah that's no problem at all thank you for having me and yeah uh if you're in london or even can travel to london come to our show on the 18th and uh if not, and you're from somewhere else in the world, then um, we hope to see you soon. And uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?